nice hoping you'd bring me here. Guess how many pints are drunk worldwide every day? How many? Ten million! Ten million? You're joking. I wouldn't joke ever. You're a fact machine. Are we in heaven? Here, Guide Colm leads us through the four key scents that make up the bouquet of this particular beer. Each one represents a different in ingredient. I thought you were just obsessed with vaping. Between 80 to 90% of your taste is produced by smell. I can't be more exact. I'm not Stephen Fry. Mm. I like this one. Hey, man, love this vibe, man. Oh, it's gone straight to his head. Yeah. Such a lightweight on malt. All this information is fascinating, and in no way a slog. You just have to get through before the free pint. Finally! We would like two WKDs, please. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to pour the perfect pint. Yeah, I've got a bit of PTSD about this, because I had one shift in a pub in Birmingham, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> in fact, they still owe me the money for that shift. Mm. It's the junction in Moseley, and you owe me cash. Ready to nurse a perfect pint, as well as some long-held grievances, we follow Colm's instructions carefully. That felt really nice. Yeah. Feels good, doesn't it? Oh. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to let that settle. This is called the surge. The painstaking wait for inebriation is due to this particular brand of beer being pressurised with nitrogen, whose tiny bubbles need time to sort themselves out. Look at that dome. Wow. Excellent. Oh, wow. Come at me, nitrogen. Oh, sensational. Oh, my God, I'm an expert. Yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding. You're like a gay Asian pat butcher. Has been said. Time for Calm to very mildly blow our minds. We're actually going to put your face on that head. In what may be the single most pointless invention since the Amstrad emailer. Hi, Alan. We can now print our own faces onto our pints. Look, I'm on a pint. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so nice. My mum's going to be so proud of me for this haram act. <laughs> Seeing us for the winos we are, Colm sensibly dumps us in the bar. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, my face yeah. is delicious. My face is even more delicious. Mm. I'm smooth, I'm a bit bitter, creamy. I'm tall, dark and handsome. Yeah, yeah. So is this the end? Of your life? Of the trip? Well, it's the end of part one. To quench our raging thirst, I take Catherine to the Koenig Brewery for a sundowner. Here we are. Here's your ticket. This dump boasts a butcher's, a cheese shop, a chocolatier and a tour to rival Capri World. Looks nice, isn't it? But best of all, there's a bar where visitors can try a beer and bites experience designed to show how cold golds can be paired with more than crisps and nuts. Lovely. Oh, that smells oh, lovely. Oh, Sam, look at that. We're going to start from the left with the okay. cheese. Now we work our way up, and right. I'll bring some beers in every time. New beer, it's your experience. I'll be right there. We should probably get an ambulance waiting. I don't think they're pints of. OK. I think they're little pocket beers. I mean, look at that. Oh, we're yeah, fine. We're fine. You'll be fine. This is the oldest beer of this brewery. What's it called? It's called Bollocker. Say it again. Bollocker, the Koning. The nickname was the Bollocker because of the bowl-shaped glass. Matched with this smirk-provoking ale is a goat's cheese, aged on site. Take your beer, smell it, as you would do with a good wine. Then you take a good sip, so you end up beneath the head. Thank, thank you, sir. Sam. Okay, thank you. Bollock. Nice cup of bollock. <laughs> God, I'm ten years old. Mm. That's a delicious goat's cheese. I could get used to this. No sooner have we sipped and noshed than Sam is back. Now, that looks like champagne to me. Actually, the nickname of this beer is the champagne of the beers. Is it? It pairs beautiful with an old Comté. You know the Comté is from France, the region of Jura? It was actually aged for two years. <laughs> yes, I do, yeah. It was aged for two years. Only two? Only two, yes. Only two, okay. <laughs> Please do enjoy it. We will. That's a very sort of feminine beer, wouldn't you say? Gentle. Oh. It's a very feminine cheese. Very feminine cheese. <laughs> Feminine cheese. The new novel from <laughs> Catherine Parkinson. <laughs> Round three sees a smoky beer accompanied by a smoky ham. That's very nice. It has got a smokiness to it, but it's a lot smoother, actually. It has. It does look like sort of different stages of dehydration, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that is a medical emergency. That's like, right. Grandad's got hours. But that's good living. That's good living. <laughs> <laughs> More to come. Oh, yeah. wow. Next on the plate, cured beef. Next in the glass, a pokey Belgian triple. 
That beer does feel alcoholic. I do feel like... I need a lie down. I feel like I need a fight and a lie down. <laughs> Sam brings pudding. <laughs> oh, look. Mm. That's the star of the show, isn't it? And to wash it down, kombucha, a fermented tea. Now, I've struggled with kombucha. Why? I don't know. I love your bedtime stories. Tell me another. <laughs> How have you found this pairing experience? I've really enjoyed it, but I'm quite drunk. <laughs> so I enjoy most things when I'm quite drunk, to be honest. I am, I am a bit drunk. Yeah, well, so you should be. Should we just finish the lot? Yeah. Cheers. To the deal. Tired, emotional, confused, and somewhat the worse for kombucha, we decide enough is enough and turn in. Finish our trip. Yes. I brought us the coolest neighbourhood in all of Marseille, La Cour Julien. Wow. And I've got us this gorgeous table. What better way to toast our time in the second city than with the second most popular drink in France? The most popular is, of course, Iron Brew. Merci. So this is pastis, okay. which is the traditional drink here. It's sort of aniseed, licorice, and then loads of herbs like sage and thyme and. It sounds disgusting. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, it's disgusting. I quite like it. Do you? Yeah. You've got the alcohol-free version. I've got the halal version, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got a bit of a mouthwash vibe. Have you had a nice time? Oh, I've had the best time. i your best friend. You are the bits to my bobs. I've learnt, I've laughed, I've cried? Nearly cried. Nearly cried? Yeah, well, that what was when we were... Cry? Well, the salt water. Yeah. yeah, when we were doing the underwater museum. Yeah. I like being in water, but normally like in a jacuzzi. Very impressed with your diving skills, actually. Thank you. Pretty cool. I'm a real sporty guy. Like you said, what is it, the city of 100 neighbourhoods? And it does feel like that. It's such yeah. a nice mix, you know? Yeah, we've been to three. But the magic of television will make it look like we've been everywhere. Yeah. You know? Thank God for so that. wait, don't move. You've got a little fly there. Oh, there we go. Bob's. I'm joking. Cheers. Cheers. Still hate it? Yeah, it's disgusting, yeah. Should we go? Let's go. Right. Thank you, Joe. I love this city! Oh, yes, Phil. That's the one. That's the one. Oh. oh. This is nice, isn't it? Yes, it is. My favourite thing about this place, there, it's got a bar. Has it? And Mummy's got a thirst. The tradition of bathing in geothermal water dates back to the 12th century. As do the clothes your mum wears. Not a fact, just a burn. Uh, hello. Hello. We've been hello. trapped out here for hours and we're really thirsty. Yeah. I'll have a... Yeah. Two of those, please. Two good... It's basically a giant bathtub with a bar in it. Yeah. It's Xanadu. Beer was banned in Iceland for most of the 20th century. Thank you very much. Tack. But now they're as messed up as the rest of us. I just did backstroke with a pint in my hand. Skull. Skull. Good health. See, this is very, very civilised. They seem to have sort of cracked it. Everyone's very quiet and respectful. There's no overt drunkenness or unpleasantness. Like, if he was in Birmingham. Skull. Margaret! Margaret, do you want another one? Put the pizza on a lilo. Float it over. <laughs> By the time we finish our two-hour improv, the bath has cured my asthma. After pointlessly travelling to and fro across a river, time for a drink in the old town. Dos Calimochos. OK, perfect. Oh. What did you just say to that man? I just gave him my number. As my personal sommelier never tires of telling me, a calimocho is the fave drink of the Basques, as well as any experimental teenager. A combo of red wine and Coke. Cheers. Cheers, Joe. Oh, that's dangerously lovely, isn't it? Mm. This is a bad thing to discover that I like. Yeah. You'd lose count pretty quickly. Yeah, I'd lose count, but I'd know something would, has happened because I'd probably have my top off. Call yourself Captain Calimochos. It's called Calimochos because on the 12th of August, 1972, a guy called Cali, who was yeah. running a festival, ordered a load of wine for it, and then the wine was disgusting. And um, he was like, how oh, am I going to make this wine better? Whacked a load of coke in it. 
And Mochos means ugly. Ugly Cali. Ugly Cali, the festival mm. scally. I would like a glass of wine and a glass of Coca-Cola. Yeah. So I can make them in my mouth. Thank goodness for the magic of television. Oh, look. Speak of the devil. Thank the you. Red wine. Mmm. And the Coca. Should be careful Thank saying you. speak of the devil in Bilbao, actually. Thank you. Right. Here we go. There's a technique to it. Yeah, go on. Talk me through it. You've got to kind of do a Wallace and Gromit turtle kind of mouth. <laughs> We've forgotten the crackers, Gromit. It works. It really looks good as well when you do it. Yeah. I feel like if we were on a date, that would have sealed the deal for me. Salud. I brought you to my favourite bar. Oh, so OK. Was, and the reason it's my favourite bar yeah. is that it's also Peter Andre's favourite bar. Oh, really? It was opened in 2005 by two brothers and one of their ex-wives. Oh, OK. I just love that kind of vibe. We're here to down national cocktail, the Brandy Sour, made by combining these ingredients and originally invented in the 50s for King Farouk of Egypt as an alcoholic version of iced tea. Ooh, right on you. Oh, <gasps> thank wow. you. Thank you so much. Nice, thank Enjoy. you. Thank Cheers, thank you. you. Yamas. Yamas. Mmm. Oh, that is lovely. Mm. Nice. Very fruity, quite tangy. It's bitter, isn't it? It's the back of your throat, you know what I mean? Mmm. Peter Andre loves these. Oh, yeah? Smashes these back all day long. Hey, with him he's mysterious girl. Ah! And it's the other reason I love this place. Six minutes from the airport, baby! Oh, wow. Woo! It's been a good 48 hours, though. We've done a lot in two days. What would you say your favourite thing has been in the last two days? The goat milking. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have got to do the actions. Uh, yeah, I've got to. <laughs> what do you make of the hotel? The hotel was great. It's so unique. Yeah, the cats became annoying, actually. The water sports was fun. Enjoyed I that. loved that, because I loved beating a boat. I felt you, really... You were good at swimming. I didn't even see you breathe. No, I got gills. Yeah. Everyone you... from Birmingham does. <laughs> yeah. I've got plastic in my gills. in the canal too much. That's my favourite thing from this whole trip, is your accents. <laughs> and maybe you do an impression of me. You could wander very quickly into homophobia here, so good luck. <laughs> Right, Mo, do you want to come Cyprus with me? I am pale like a Scot as well. Yeah, it's kind of like gingery blonde, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. African sunset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in what's known in Croatian as a state of yakka. Do you know what that is? Uh, being battered by bubbles on your back. It's, it's between somewhere and, and nowhere. It's not quite anywhere. Sort of like Reading. All that punning has given us a raging thirst. So we're heading to the hundred-year-old Bar de Gomez to try Brazil's national drink and a snack. Hola, what Hola. Hola. Posso Hola. Ajudar? Hello. Hi. We would like two caprinhas okay. and two cachinha. Cochinha. Cochinha. Yes, please, thank you. Thank you. Agora, the caipirinha is the national drink of Brazil. Lime, sugar and cachaça are muddled, to use a cocktail term, and mixed. What do you think of cochinha? I don't know. Shit squatty. Cochinha are the deep-fried love child of a scotch egg and a croquette. They're traditionally made with chicken thigh, or in this case, shrimp. Ooh. Ooh. There you go, shrimp thigh. Oh. Um, cheers. Merry Christmas, cheers. You know when you just, like, your back muscles spasm? Yeah. What, what is that? It's really strong alcohol coursing through your system. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's a par party shiver. It's a party shiver. Yeah, that's very sweet. You like it? a lot of sugar mm. and a lot of alcohol. I quite like it. I love it. I mean, look at that. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. There's definitely a shrimpy element to it. Oh. I wouldn't like to guarantee that it's the thigh of shrimp. No. But it's nice. It's nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm Might... not sure it needs spice. I'm going to try some. Just Are because, you? Well, You're such a bad boy. But I don't play by the rules, Joe. No. Yeah. Get a load I'm of this. Gonna... Quite a lot went on there. You got a party shiver there? That particularly amusing amuse-bouche rounds off the third quarter of our Jingle Bell jaunt to Rio. Merry Christmas, mate. This week, I'm in Vilnius in Lithuania. I'm here with your fellow countrymen. By country, I mean the northeast, and by man, I mean woman. 
it's Sarah Millican. To sample the authentic taste of Ujupis, we head to the Spunker Bar for two glasses of its eponymous beer. Hello. Hi. You have a nice coat. <laughs> Thank you. You, you look, look nice. like a microphone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovely place. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like a pint of Spunker, please. Oh, yeah, yes. make that two. Thank you very much. Oh, it's really good. It definitely has that sort of corky, barrelly vibe to it. Yes, that sounds like you don't know what you're talking about. I, I was literally just filling there. I know. Yeah, right. It is nice, is what yeah. I can do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get around the fact that it's called Sprunker. I can't. Well, cheers. Let's get Uju pissed. <laughs> Excellent plan. It's time to leave this double entendre strewn district and almost time to go home.